Hey, what's up, Royal Family? Today on Passport Kings, we're going to go over the top 10 ways to save money on your next vacation. Engage. This is Passport Kings. Welcome aboard abroad. My name is Rockland. I'm a travel advisor. I make Passport Kings travel videos to inform, review, and excite you about vacation destinations and other travel related information. Now, if this is a topic you like, consider subscribing to Passport Kings and ring the notification bell so you can be the first thing to know when I upload new content. Now, number one is to avoid the peak season. Now, this is probably the most common advice given, but still one of the best you can follow. The trick is to travel when fewer people are visiting locations you want to visit. Hotel rates and expenses soar during the peak season. Not only will you enjoy fewer crowds, but prices tend to drop dramatically during the shoulder and off season. Save yourself a substantial amount of money and stress. You can also consider shortening your trip a little. The focus on the quality more than the quantity of the experience. Think about sidestepping tourist meccas as well. For short trips, try to avoid going on weekends or during popular holidays. Number two is go where you can stretch your dollars. Pick countries where you can get more out of your home currency to significantly lower the average daily spending. For example, you could try out Southeast Asian countries, South American countries, and a lot of the Caribbean. You'll enjoy amazing cultures, exotic local cuisines, spectacular landscapes, and lush sceneries without burning a hole in your pockets. Visiting countries that just have general lower prices will make your money stretch. Now number three is follow a strict travel budget. Do the necessary research instead of going to a location blind. It's crucial to plan ahead, set your priorities straight, and create a travel budget. Ask yourself, what do you want out of your trip? Are you there for the local cuisine, comfortable accommodations, popular activities, or the women? Then spend money on these priorities and save on less important things. Some countries are more expensive than others. It's best to skew your spending accordingly so you won't run out of funds on your itinerary's top locations. Always keep a close eye on your expenses. Determine a reasonable daily cap and then stick to that limit. The next one is travel light and smart. I say this all the time. Rather than carrying around heavy luggage, it's better to get used to carry-on bags and avoid overpacking. A good tip is to roll items such as clothing. Only carry the essential things that you need. The savings that you'll be keeping from baggage fees will be significant. Bringing a water container is better than buying water in small plastic bottles. The same goes for coffee. The cost can add up, especially if you're a coffee lover since a cup can be more expensive than in other countries. Having small instant coffee drink packets instead of ordering cups of Starbucks, Americano or Espresso will save you money. It's a good idea to skip drinks and dessert to keep the bills as low as possible when dining out. And of course, if you can, make sure the resort that you're in is all inclusive so you can eat and drink as much as you want. Number five is live like a local. Remember the old proverb, when in Rome do as the Romans do. It remains relevant and still applies today, especially when you're traveling abroad. Mingling with locals is a cost-effective way of getting to know the local culture. In Mexico, I always ask them, what's the Americana price compared to what's the local's price? Avoid asking the concierge. Living like a local is the most authentic way to experience a country and can turn out to be a memorable adventure. You could try staying with the family, ride on the local transportation, and get tips from working class people about the finest, affordable places where you can eat. You can also ask them about notable spots that aren't packed with tourists and the most practical routes to reach them. Always pull out your Uber app and see if Uber is working. If not, use the local buses. Make sure you watch the end of this video so you can download my free ebook about how to make money in the travel industry. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and press the notification bell. Number six, bring more than one credit or debit card. It's better to use credit cards but never rely on a single one when traveling. Have multiple credit and debit cards as a contingency in case one gets frozen, lost, stolen, or hacked. It's smart to set up an account with a new card beforehand that's solely for traveling. You want to separate the bulk of your funds at home to protect you from the risk of fraud while traveling abroad. Make sure you use cards with zero foreign transaction fees and only transact with the local currency to avoid paying more for your purchases. Always keep in mind the currency conversions. If ATMs abroad give you a choice between the local and home currency, always choose the local one. 
Use like Google app in order to determine USD to whatever currency that you're changing it into. Number seven is widening your housing options. Instead of booking a room in an expensive hotel, consider other options such as highly rated hostels or charming boutique hotels. Also, Airbnb is pretty big nowadays. And if you prefer a resort, make sure you're getting as much bang for your buck as possible. But remember, you can also try to find guest houses where you can negotiate a better deal in person. It could be very favorable to you during the off season. The next one is a pretty old tip, but use a local SIM card. Typically, you can buy a local SIM card at the airport and it would only set you back about $15. For example, a Vodafone SIM while in Spain will give you about 15 gigabytes for a month. You can also save on free video calls by using Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and an affordable Skype phone plan. I usually use WhatsApp because it usually works everywhere. You don't wanna rack up hundreds of dollars on charges for your American phone calls for roaming calls. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but number nine is use ride sharing apps instead of taxis. Riding the local taxis is one of the top ways of getting scammed, especially if you're a tourist unfamiliar with the place. Usually it's more expensive to go around in a cab than ride sharing. If it's too far of a walk, think twice before hailing a cab. Have at least one of the popular ride share apps such as Uber, Cabify, or Lyft installed in your smartphone instead. And if you're really daring, like sometimes I am, Take the local transportation. It's not as scary as a lot of people make it out to be. And number 10 is go incognito online and clear your cash. Sadly, companies have a way of taking advantage of you on the internet, and those in travel industries are no exceptions. Even Google collects data and tracks your online habits. If you wanna get the best deals and the most savings, get rid of your online history and cookies before booking a flight or reservations. By clearing your cash, you could look like a first-time traveler, prompting them to offer you lower prices. Take Take advantage of your browser's incognito or privacy mode, and then go to www.passportkings.com and click on book a flight. A VPN could also help since booking in some countries costs less than others. And that, my friends, is the 10 ways to save money on your next vacation. Now, if you're interested in having your own travel business, either full-time or part-time, just check out the description for upcoming webinars to get you started. Now, did I miss out on any tips on how to save money on your next vacation? If you got some information, feel free to uh, comment it down below. I'll be happy to read it and respond to your questions. Make sure that no one's getting more money than you are willing to give them, like a king of Passport Kings. Peace.